We're finally at the home stretch of surviving the cold days in New York City. Cherry blossoms are blooming, allergy meds are flying off pharmacy shelves, and people are exchanging their winter parkas for lighter coats. Congratulations! You've survived the winter! Now it's time to enjoy New York with this month's edition of 6 Free Things to Do in New York City. April Fools! We're not covering free things to do. Instead, we're covering expensive things to do in New York City in the month of April. My name is Thea and you're watching Urban Caffeine, a channel that gives you all the free and expensive things to do in New York City. If you like videos like this, make sure to hit that like button. And make sure to check out all the other videos in the Things to Do series on this channel. New York is interesting to look at, whether you view from below, from the side, or from above. A 30-minute helicopter tour of Manhattan is $329 plus a facility and fuel charge of $40. That's about $370 per person for half an hour. I haven't been on one of the New York helicopter tours, but coming from those that have taken it, they rave about it. I have to say, I was on a flight once that was headed to LaGuardia, but for some reason or other, we couldn't land right away, so the plane was flying in a box pattern over Manhattan. It was a clear night, so I was able to look down and see the city straight down, and moving directly above New York City at night, looking straight down, is surreal and subliminal. However, if you don't want to throw down $400 on a 30-minute aerial view of New York City, I have a couple cheaper options for you. First option, you can go to one of the observatories instead for $40 to $60. Popular observatories are the One World Tower, the Edge at Hudson Yards, the Empire State Building, Top of the Rock at the Rockefeller Center, and the Summit at One Vanderbilt. Or second, even cheaper, is to take the Roosevelt Island Tram. The tram ride is 10 minutes long and has the low low price of $2.75. Helicopter rides are usually along the Hudson River, and the Roosevelt Island Tram crosses the East River between Manhattan Island and Roosevelt Island. An option you can do is ride it from Manhattan, walk around Roosevelt Island, and then ride it back. As of recording, the only way to pay for the Roosevelt Island tram is through a metro card. And yes, the unlimited on a metro card works on the Roosevelt Island tram. If you need an explainer video on how to use the metro card, where to use it, how to buy it, and all everything, everything you need to know, I've got you covered in this video. The Michelin Guide as in the marshmallow looking person for Michelin tires, is a prestigious international food guide. This guide was originally made to encourage people to venture out more because in 1889, France had less than 3,000 cars in the country. And since the Michelin brothers were in the business of creating tires, it was to their best interest that people drove more, so they made this hotel and restaurant guide. But I guess the curators for the restaurant section of this guide were finicky eaters, because today, to be on the Michelin guide is an honor and prestige for chefs and restaurants around the world. The highest rating you can get on the Michelin guide is three stars. So there's two star, one star, and an honorable mention. As of filming, New York City, a city with thousands of restaurants, only has five restaurants that have three-star Michelin ratings. Because it's incredibly hard to get on the Michelin Guide, let alone a three-star rating. The five restaurants with a three-star rating are Le Bernardin, Eleven Madison, Per Se, Massa, which are both at Columbus Circle, and Chef's Table at Brooklyn Fair. But with prestige comes a price tag. To give you an idea, the chef's tasting menu at Le Bernardine will cost about $300 per person. If you add on the wine pairing, that's $468 per person. Yes, I've eaten at a couple of these places, and yes, they were pretty good meals. But you don't have to dine at a three-star Michelin restaurant to experience good food. There are plenty of alternatives, especially here in New York City. First of all, there are 101 honorable mentions on the Michelin Michelin guide that are worth going to, and not all are expensive. 
But on the cheap end of the New York food spectrum, one event that I'm super excited for because it's coming back this summer and there are a couple sneak peek events in April is the Queen's Night Market. And there's sneak peek events that are on April 15th and the 22nd. What I like about the Queen's Night Market is that all menu items across the board are $6 or less. Well, it was $6 last year. I'm hoping they'll keep the price the same this year. But what's great about this is that you can enjoy a variety of food with other food festivals like Smorgasburg, which is fun and all with great food, but they don't have a cap on food items. So food items are priced higher and you get more portions of it. So what ends up happening for me is that I just buy two food items from two vendors because I'm too full after that and I don't get to try all the other things from the food festival. It works when you have a large group of people so that everybody can buy a variety of things and you can share. But at the Queen's Night Market, it doesn't matter. Everything is $6 across the board. I end up buying five or six different items from five or six different vendors and then I'm full. The Queen's Night Market is in Corona Park in Queens. You can get there with the 7 train or you can take the Long Island Railroad. Live performances like musicals and other theater performances are expensive because of all that go into the production. Live performances is something New York is well known for and it's popular among tourists and locals alike. Depending on the production, you can pay anywhere from $20 to $2,000. I say depending on the performance because there's Broadway, off-Broadway, and off-off-Broadway. One major difference among these theaters is in their capacities and also pricing. And on top of getting your expensive ticket, if you really want to paint the town red, you can add a VIP experience to your Broadway show. For example, the Broadway Moulin Rouge. You can get front and center seats for about $300. Then add on their VIP experience that includes an express entry, which is nice if you hate crowds, access to a VIP room, a welcome bubbly, and one of the best perks, a private restroom. If you've ever been to a super popular production, the restroom situation is insane. Which is unfortunate because productions are usually more than two hours long. I went to Hamilton once, which is a super famous production. During intermission, the line to the bathroom was all the way to the front of the stage. It would be very unfortunate for you to be at the end of that line because you would either miss the start of the second half or you would have to hold it. Because they're not gonna wait for everybody to finish using the bathroom before starting the performance. So with the front and center ticket, plus the VIP experience, that's about $370 per person for a Broadway show. Considering that some tickets go into the thousands of dollars, relatively speaking, this is pretty good for unrestrained spending. But as an absolute value, $400 is pretty steep just to watch one show. If you want some affordable options, in my February Things to Do video, I enumerated different ways on how to watch Broadway for cheap, along with other things that you can do for cheap or free indoors in New York City. The theater district is near Times Square, and if you're interested about the development of the theater district and how it came about, check out this video. Times Square has many train options, so getting to a Broadway show shouldn't be too much of a feat. Manhattan, for all its density and concrete grounds, is still an island. It's surrounded by the Hudson River, the New York Bay, East River, Harlem River, and the Spiten Dyville Creek. Being surrounded with so much water, there are so many vessels that you can find on these waterways. On a nice day, a popular thing to do is spend time on or by the water with the Manhattan skyline in the backdrop. But if you have a boating license, you can take your private boat and ride along the East River. And if you don't have a private boat, you can rent one. Boat rentals can come with a captain or a crew, so you don't have to worry about the logistics of bringing a boat out to the water. Depending on the size of the boat, you can pay $500, $1,000, or even $3,500. But like everything else in this video, I have a cheap option for you, which is to take the NYC ferry. You can take it from Wall Street, all the way to the Bronx and back. Or if you want a shorter ride, you can take it to other docks up the East River. 
A 90 minute ticket is $4. And if you want a drink or snack, they have a snack bar on board. Or you can bring your own. There was one point I would take the ferry to work. And every morning, there was this person who also took the same ferry as me and got off at the same stop. They would have their bowl of granola or cereal. They'd step on the ferry carrying their bowl or granola. They'll be eating it. And by the time we got to our stop, they'd be done and just throw the bowl away. That was their breakfast routine every single day. If you don't know how to buy tickets, how to board the ferry, or how the whole system works, I've created this video. This video is a little dated because when I filmed it, the ferry was only $2.75. Since then, they've hiked up the price to $4. But with regards of buying the ticket and everything else, this video is still relevant. I was so sad when football season ended. I tried watching the XFL, but... It's not the same as the NFL. Coincidentally, the NFL draft is happening in April, so that's another April thing. But we're not talking about football, we're talking about baseball, because with the end of football season is the opening of baseball season. In New York, the major league teams are the New York Yankees in the Bronx and the Mets at City Field in Queens. Like theater performances, tickets to baseball games can vary from $15 to several thousand dollars. On the high end, you can get a seat that has access to a suite. Suites have all-inclusive food and drinks, cushioned seats, and very convenient private restrooms. Depending on who's playing in the day of the week, tickets with suite access can start at $200 and can go well over $2,000. I love baseball and hot dogs in the summertime, but not for $1,000. In a video I created on how to watch a Yankees game, I listed out affordable ways to watch a game. The same concept applies to watching a Mets game. Check out this video, link is in the description. You can get to City Field by taking the 7 train or the Long Island Railroad. And you can get to Yankee Stadium by taking the B, D, and 4 trains or the Metro North Railroad. And you betcha, this channel has got you covered with all your questions on how to use these transportation options. And April wouldn't be complete without cherry blossoms in bloom. The pricey thing to do is go to one of the cherry blossom festivals, which are around $40 per person. But what's frustrating about these festivals is that on top of paying $40 for the entry fee, they also serve overpriced food. The cheap option is to go to all the free places that have the cherry blossoms in bloom and picnic on your own. And the cherry blossom season is all throughout April, all the way to early May. Some locations are Central Park, Roosevelt Island, Randall's Island, Corona Park, and Greenwood Cemetery. All are free to go to. The cherry blossoms are highlighted across the country because they only happen once a year and sometimes for a short period of time. And they're highly Instagrammable. I personally do not go to see the cherry blossoms because I have bad allergies. But if you do, comment down below. I'll just live vicariously through you. Well, you can easily burn through thousands of dollars in New York City every single day, you don't necessarily have to. Everything usually has an alternative, as you can see in this video. Expensive activities are just that. Expensive activities. There are many ways to maximize your time and resources to create rich experiences, to have a good quality life, or have just many memories in New York City. But if you do have the resources, one way of spending those resources is to join the Patreon community of Urban Caffeine. I run this channel completely on my own. I don't have a writer, an editor, or a film crew. Just a couple mascots. All these videos are made 100% by me. So any contribution on Patreon really does help keep this channel active. For the price of less than a ferry ride in New York City, you can help support Urban Caffeine. As an added bonus, you can gain access to exclusive videos where I talk about what it's like being a content creator and sharing some of the things I do in New York. Hop on over to patreon.com slash urbancaffeine for more details. Until next time, thank you so much for watching and until the next video, happy New Yorking!